Hey, hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and some games are absolute masterpieces, but they have one or two sections that you didn't quite enjoy. Maybe a game is just really frustrating sometimes, or maybe it's a bit boring. Well, today I'm here to talk about games that I personally really didn't have any issues with whatsoever, or more in the sense that I picked the game up and I was just having fun the entire way through and I almost didn't realize that I played the entire game before it was done, but I was just completely satisfied because these games were just the perfect length. Doesn't mean I think these games are all 10 out of 10 experiences. No, they were just really great fun from start to finish with no really boring or too hard sections. I have a couple of games I want to go through, so why don't we just start with the first game? It is Super Mario RPG, the remake specifically, because I picked this game up, well, I was fortunate enough to do the video review on our channel, and with video reviews, there's a lot of games that I just play a couple of hours because I need to capture gameplay and whatnot, but with this one, it was just so good that I was just playing through the entire thing, and luckily the game isn't too long, but it, there was just so many unique areas, the gameplay was fun, the writing was hilarious, and there was not one moment where I thought, man, this is boring, I'm not having fun. I really liked that it wasn't too hard, and before I knew it, the game was done. It was just really nice to finally be able to play this game that so many people have been talking about, so many people were happy that we were getting this remake, so interesting to see Gino and Mallow and learning about all these weird, unique characters. It's so different from many other games that I've played. I haven't played a lot of classic RPG experiences. And yeah, you can really, you can feel that it's an older game, but it holds up extremendously well. That's not a word, but it sounds cool. Extremendously. You know what other game is also extremendous? It is Return to Monkey Island. Return to Monkey Island was my first endeavor with the Monkey Island series, and it's actually my only one. I haven't really played any of the other games, but let me tell you, I really enjoy Return to Monkey Island. And again, just like Super Mario RPG, there's so much to uncover with this one. You go to many different islands, you learn of all these different characters. The writing is hilarious, although there's no combat in this one. There's a lot of point and clicking and a lot of secrets to uncover. There's some fun puzzles that you have to overcome and personally I really love the art style. It feels like I'm running around in this abstract painting and I'm just glad they stuck with it even though so many people didn't enjoy it. If you haven't played Return to Monkey Island I definitely think you should. I think it's underrated. I don't see enough people talking about it and it's just a really really great time. I need to get on the ship of the other Monkey Island games because I hear they are equally as good. And yeah, suddenly the game was just done and I had been on this great adventure with no real issues. I didn't find the puzzles too hard and when they were, they have a brilliant hint system in the game which just gradually hints at what you need to do. So maybe the first hint is just very vague and the more you press it, the more directly the hint is and you'll figure it out in the end. But I really appreciate this because so many games can be frustrating or just annoying to me if I have to go on, on the internet to find out the solution and it's like, oh man, why didn't I think of that? I didn't have to use the hint system very often because a lot of the puzzles were just very, you know, you figured them out if you just thought a bit about it and I, that, those are the best kinds of games. But the next game is a game that has no point in clicking, no puzzles of sorts. It is fighting in hell in Hades. Hades is such a phenomenal experience. It's a roguelike game with pages and pages of dialogue. Everything is voice acted and the gameplay is just tremendously fun. You're trying to escape hell and you'll get the help from all the Olympian gods that'll help you with boons and stuff and you'll get stronger and stronger. But a thing I have with roguelites is that I find it very, every time I die, it's like, oh, I don't want to keep going or like, oh man, all that progress is lost. But with this one, it really just, you just want to go again. You die, okay, I'm going to go again. I'm going to talk to all the characters first because every time you die, it feels like every character has new dialogue, which is just insane because you die a lot. And this was just the perfect game to have on the Switch because I was going a lot on a ferry. Uh, my wife's mother lived on an island and we had to go there quite a lot. 
And I was just playing Hades when we went on that ferry trip. It was like around an hour. I just specifically remember that sitting there and playing Hades. And it was just such a nice experience. I love all the different characters, all the different abilities you get. So you get different weapons that all tremendously change how you approach these small like dungeon thing. I don't know what you call it. Small dungeons. Hades, absolutely marvelous experience that again, is one of those games that not once did I think, man, this game is just not very fun. No, it's absolutely fantastic experience from start to end. And uh, yeah, that leads me perfectly on to the next game and every game coming after that, because that's the whole point of this video. It's games that were just fun from start to finish. It's a game called Shin Shan, me and the professor on summer vacation, the endless seven day journey. This game is made by the team that also made Attack of the Friday Monsters, a 3DS game, which I got to try just before the eShop closed. It's a very fun game, but not as good as this game, I think. And then also the Boku no Natsu Asumi series, which is stuck in Japan. So this was really the first big game by the studio that was like localized properly. And man, am I glad it was because Shin Shan, me and the professor on summer vacation, the endless seven day journey <laughs> is uh, such a peaceful bliss experience. You're running around in this little Japanese village as a little boy and you're just going around talking to characters, catching bugs, fishing, and then gradually during the game, you get access to more and more of this village. And I absolutely love that. I love the sounds the bugs make and the wind in the trees and just the kind of, you know, if you've been in like a small town, there's almost no one around and you just walk around and feel the atmosphere of this small town. There's nothing better than that. And there are some twists that keeps this game interesting. And I really like how it feels like there's something new to do every day. And you never quite feel like, oh, what should I do now? Because you're just going around and taking in the atmosphere. The days are at a perfect length, I feel. It's when you've done the things you want to do. It's starting to get in the evening. And then when it's evening, you can do other stuff around in the town. And then you go to a bath, you eat with your family, you go up on your room, you write in your little diary. It's all very, very lovely. And I get such a nice and warm, fussy feeling just thinking about the game as such such a nice adventure from start to finish. You should definitely check this game out if you haven't had the chance. But a game that I hadn't checked out because I just hadn't given it the chance, but loads of people had been telling me it was just an incredible experience. It's a classic. It's Professor Layton and the Curious Village. If you don't know what Professor Layton is, it's a puzzle game. So you go around, talk to people and they have puzzles that you have to solve and then you'll get some kind of information. I mean, I've only played Curious Village yet. So I've played a bit of the second one, but it didn't grab me the same way the first game did. The first game has such a unique and weird atmosphere. And I think the music has a big part to play in that. It, it, when you're playing around, it's like bum, 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 bum. You, you feel like, hmm, something is wrong here. Is there something wrong here? I mean, if you've played Professor Layton, you, you might know. These puzzles are just incredible. And if you're having trouble with one of them, which I did, you can just turn to a person in your life that are better than puzzles. In my example, my wife, and she could solve them for me. I mean, the game also has a hint system where if you click around on the map, you'll find these coins that you can exchange for hints. And yeah, more games should just do that, you know, make the hint system actually a part of the gameplay. So you're trying to find all these coins. Yeah, I think it's absolutely brilliant. I'm just so glad that I gave this game a go from the minute I booted it up. It was just like, yes, I get it. I get why this is a genius formula for a game. And even then you finish the game and everything just makes sense about why people are going around and asking you puzzles all the time. Then you play the second game and people still do that and you're like, What's going on? But the next game I'm going to talk about is also a game with puzzles, but these puzzles are much more like intuitive, if that makes sense. It's a game with no dialogue and it's Cocoon, made by Danish developer. So uh, yeah, that's a big win in my Danish book. The idea of Cocoon is that you have these orbs with worlds inside of them, and then you can go inside the orbs and keep going inside orbs, inside orbs, and then you can take the orbs inside the orbs and other orbs inside other orbs, and I've said orbs way too many times, so I'm gonna not say orb one more time when I'm talking about Cocoon. Cocoon is a puzzle game, but the way it does the puzzles is unlike any other game that I've played because of the round things. 
And the puzzles are just the, the kind of ones that you might be stumped for one or two seconds and then you get it. You don't even have to search online for anything. I didn't have to search a single time, but there were times when I thought, how on earth do I do that? And then when I did it, it was incredibly rewarding. It's the kind of balance that's very hard to get in puzzle games and Cocoon does it to a T. The environments you run around in are all based on like one color, which signifies which sphere you are inside of. And the music and sound effects, it's all very atmospherical, which perfectly fits this game. Now, I don't want to talk too much about this game because I just feel that you should experience it yourself and it's not very long. So the more I talk about it, the more I just spoil about these wonderful puzzles and the gameplay. Yeah, I don't want to show too much gameplay. So yeah, go go play Cocoon. It's absolutely wonderful. But the last game I want to talk about here today is Super Mario Bros. Wonder, because that game, it is just the definition of fun. Mario Bros. Wonder has so much new in it besides in the title, new enemies, new types of environments, and the wonder flower effects. That is really the star of the show. There's so many unique and new ideas where I go like, man, I love this game. I would have never thought of even doing that, but now that I'm playing it, it's like, yes, that just makes sense. It's awesome when you can really feel that the developers just had fun making this. And it is so gorgeous to look at. The music is absolutely outstanding. And the levels not being too long was perfect for short bursts of play where you just, maybe you were just like in the living room and you had a couple of minutes. So like, yeah, I'll just play a level or two of Mario Bros. Wonder. Then I can go do some other things. I can come back to the game, play a bit. And I just really enjoyed that. You know what I also really enjoyed was the badges in the game. It works perfectly for a 2D platformer like this. It shakes up the gameplay besides all the weird wonder flower effects. But yeah, Mario Bros. Wonder was just so fun from start to finish. And not once did I think, ah, this this level, it's not it's not that good. No, they they really knocked it out of the park with this one. But I want to know down in the comments below, what games never really bored you? Just great games from start to finish that you just not even once had the thought of, hmm, this wasn't really that fun. This was boring or too hard. Yeah, just let me know down in the comments below because I think that there's a great variety of what people think is a game that, you know, was just good from start to finish and didn't really have anything that bothered them. So uh, yeah, can't wait to see what you all have to say. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out our website as well, nintendolife.com for all sorts of Nintendo related content and be sure to click that subscribe button because these videos hopefully never bore you. If they do, well, I'm sorry. All right then, stay safe, play some non-boring great games from start to finish and we'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh, what?